Hello everyone, welcome back to the workshop. Today we are going to be looking at a benchtop CNC router. And I know we've been talking a lot about lasers on this channel, but if you are into making crafts and working with your lasers for home decor and items that you can sell to people, um, this might be something that works well in your workshop. I've actually been using CNC routers for nearly 10 years um, with my RC airplane hobby. And as a matter of fact, a machine not much bigger than this uh, Put a lot of work through my workshop and uh, financed a lot of the other tools that I have in the shop, including my first CO2 laser. So CNC routers are definitely where uh, I kind of grew up into this machine automation world. So when Sane Smart reached out to me and asked me if I wanted to look at the Jedmitsu Prover XL 6050 Plus, I thought this would be great, a way that I can get back into my roots and show my viewers, you, a little bit about what CNC's can do for you in your workshop and how maybe you can blend them with lasers and others or if you're just looking at this CNC I'm going to give you some good information on getting started with this one and what I think about it for in a hobbyist workshop as well as maybe a small business so if that's something that interests you or you want to find out a little bit more about these stay tuned we're going to jump right into it all right, so let's start out by talking a little bit about the numbers of this machine now as the name implies the Prover 6050 it's a 600 by 500 millimeter working area, so that translates to be about 23.6 by 19.7 inches, and the overall travel of the Z-axis is 4.5, so I feel that's a really good size for, you know, your home decor, your small projects, up to medium projects as well. However, when thinking about this, you need to also know about the footprint, so uh, the true measurements, including your stepper motors, your knobs, your uh, your uh, cable chain and such, you're going to be looking at about 42 inches by about 37 inches and deep and then uh, about 26 inches high. And then if you're building an enclosure, which I would probably recommend you do for any of these, um, you're going to want to give yourself a couple inches of wiggle room on there just for access and movement and, and a little bit of maintenance that you need to get on there. The overall structure of this machine is fairly beefy. Now this uh, the package that came in uh, was rated at about 125 pounds and you don't lose a lot of weight in the packing. So this is definitely somewhere up there around 120 pound machine. So it is definitely beefy. It is made up of a lot of aluminum and steel. And then the uh, working area base here is a mixture of aluminum plates with uh, MDF on top of them as well. So this thing is very rigid. It is very strong. These are very thick plates. And so I, you know, it's a, it's, it's a beefy machine, but keep in mind, this isn't something that you're going to be moving around a lot. So as I mentioned earlier, you might be wanting to build an enclosure. You're definitely going to want to have a dedicated setting space for this because trust me, I've learned it myself. You're going to hurt your back trying to move this around too much. So get some help unloading it, get some help getting the box into your shop and such, find a home for it. Uh, and as you build it, uh, it's, it's going to kind of take up residence. You need to move it. You're going to want to get some help. With all that beefiness comes some very strong NEMA 23 motors. Now these are 4.3 amp and a 3.1 torque rating on them. So they are very beefy. They are going to move this machine around without any problem. And that is very helpful because they do include this 300 watt starter spindle that comes with it and works into the controller. However, they also include this mount which allows you to upgrade to a 65 millimeter spindle or a trim router as such as options, which is going to give you uh, even more cutting capabilities to really uh, take advantage of this machine's torque and uh, power through that. With that, it does have a default setting of 2,000 millimeters a minute for its top speed. I've heard from other people that they have pushed that even faster. And so um, you, you're going to need that robust size machine. You're going to need those motors. Um, to be able to keep up those speeds and sling those things around. But that just speaks to what they're looking at with this and the capabilities of the machine. They built it fairly strong, fairly beefy. Along with that, they are using lead screws and linear rails. Uh, along the x-axis, they have dual 15 millimeter linear rails. And then on the y-axis, they have dual 20 millimeter linear rails. And then they also have very thick uh, linear rods for the z-axis as well. So again, you're going to keep that precision. You're going to be working really hard with those lead screws and such and those linear rails to keep everything moving, but keep everything precise. It's also going to go in your favor over belts and rollers. Those are going to be more uh, prone for wear and adjustment. And this thing, as long as you keep them clean, keep them oiled a little bit on those rails, uh, this thing is going to keep performing with minor maintenance for you uh, just based off the structure 
and uh, those parts that they're using to uh, provide that uh, strength but also that precision movement. With that, they also have dual limit switches on all the axes, so you will be able to home in one, but they also have limit switches on the other extents of the axes so that the machine will have a hard stop if it does try to meet those extents. Some additional features this machine has is that with this 300 watt spindle, it does have on the end of it an ER11 collet, and it comes with an eighth inch adapter in it to along with a starter set of bits. So you're gonna have a easy time to get started working with a variety of straight bits, uh, ball nose bits, uh, and engraving bits. You can also uh, buy separately additional collets. So I went ahead and purchased a quarter inch collet for mine, as well as a second nut, just to make the swapping out between those easy, especially when I step up to a larger spindle, uh, I'm gonna want to be using some of those bigger bits as well. But it's very nice that they have that standard in there. So if you have ER11 set up and you have a number of bits, you'll be able to use those in here as well. Along with that, they do a pretty decent job with cable management. All of their uh, accesses have cable chain and the cables come pre-wired through there. Uh, and so they're, all you need to do is kind of connect up your motors, connect up your, uh, your cable chain to the mounts and such and get things plugged in. Uh, now I do wish they would have added just a little more finesse on the cable management, but I went ahead and added some zip die connectors and uh, just holding a few things in place just to keep them out of the way of the tracks of the limit switches, making sure they're not rubbing on anything as well. But outside of that, the cable management on here is actually fairly good. Now this all comes into a central control box that they include, which has a lot of nice features on it. It has your USB connection, but also an offline controller option. I haven't seen that offline controller yet, so I haven't can't speak to that, but um, you can use that USB connection. It is a GRBL controller, so you can plug it into Candle or UGS. Uh, you can use Vectric. You can use a lot of the Carbide Create and other offers out there that work with GRBL controllers, um, and that will interface well with here. As well, if they do have some function buttons on there, they have the speed control, as well as it is already pre-wired for the laser module that is optional with this one, and the wire is already included and ran through the cable management system as well. So all you would need to do is add it, uh, plug in the laser to that connector, and flip the switch on the box. Now they do provide your typical tools that you're going to need for the spindle and for assembly, as well as they do provide you some metal clamps that you can use in the T-Tracks. However, um, I would recommend that you probably make some of your own out of wood or 3D printed some plastic ones and such because um, if you have spent any time with CNC machines or plan to in the future, you will eventually run into these and the less metal and the less rigid they are, uh, the less damage you're going to do to your bits and your spindle and everything else. But it is nice that they include them for at least something to get started. However, I will also give you some tips on other clamping methods, such as the double-sided tape or CA and painter's tape method as well. They do provide you a USB drive, and this is going to have your drivers on there, some sample files, as well as universal G-code sender, as well as a version of Candle that you can use to get your machine set up and running. Um, you can also download those. Those are open source applications, so um, if you're the flash drive isn't working for you or you want to get the latest version, definitely just look out for those. But like I said, you can also use Carbide Create, you can use Vectric VCarve. Uh, there's a lot of options out there for what you use with this CNC machine. One of the additional nice features that they include is a Z probe. And so there is a plate down on the bottom. You clamp the, uh, the alligator clip onto your bit and then you tell your program to do the Z probe function and that will get a very precise uh, measurement off of the top of your material or off your spoil board. This is really nice when you are running files where you will be using multiple tool paths and different bits and you need to make sure you get that zero uh, very accurate each time. All right, so with the basic numbers out of the way, let's take a look at a few of the tests I was able to run with this stock setup on the 300 watt spindle. So first thing I did was I took this off cut of some hardwood and just simply cut in uh, some engravings. The first one on the bottom was just a eighth inch straight bit I ran this at 50 inches per minute and the job completed in a, just over three minutes, about three minutes, 12 seconds. And it came up pretty well. There was some fuzzies I needed to clean up with. So obviously um, slowing that down or maybe running a, uh, a final pass through there would have helped clean that up. But still, it worked out fairly well. I'm not seeing a lot of lines in the base, which is good. Uh, so that would mean our tramming is actually pretty well and the machine's doing all right. So then I swapped out the collet and went to one of my V-bits 
Um, the, they included some narrower ones, but I wanted to try my 60 degree V-bit. And so I threw that in there and ran the V-carve with that. Running that at 35 inches a minute, uh, this took about 6 minutes and 21 seconds. Again, came out fairly well with a little bit of fuzziness in the letters as well, but uh, some of that's going to be attributed to the wood, and some of it is just kind of dialing in our speeds with this spindle and um, the various bits. So after having fun with the text, I decided to try a 3D carve. And so this is a simple frog that is included with the Vectric V-Carve Pro. And so it's dished out. And what I did was I started out with a roughing pass using a 1 8 inch uh, end mill. And that job took about nine minutes, 52 seconds, just to rough in the deeper areas. And then the finishing pass with a 1 8 inch ball nose bit at 25 inches per minute took 43 minutes to finish this out. Now this is about a 5 inch square piece and uh, the I did just do some minor sanding. I took a wire brush to get rid of some of the fuzzies and then just took a quick dust mop uh, to this as well and then threw some linseed oil on there. But I did not spend a lot of time sanding this dish out. Everything is pretty much as it came off the router. Just wanted to get rid of some of the fuzzies. And um, this is using the included uh, eighth inch round over bit that they have. And it worked very well. So I was very impressed with that. And uh, for a five inch square uh, item, the whole total job took basically an hour. I was very happy with that. So I'm um, very pleased with this. It didn't lose steps. It didn't have any problems with chatter and uh, worked out pretty well. And again, this was just on the stock 300 watt spindle. So the other big thing we want to do with this is being able to do profile cuts that are precise and uh, repeatable. So again, I took the puzzle piece, and this is something that's available through VCarve Pro, but you can definitely find these vectors online and uh, work them in. And uh, cut out a couple of them. This is out of some quarter inch, um, I, I think it's called edge ply from Menards here in the Midwest, but it's uh, similar to Baltic Birch, but not quite. And uh, so I made two of them in the same program, running this with an eighth inch compression bit. And uh, that took, at 30 inches per minute, these two took about three and a half minutes to carve out. And what I was very happy with was the fit at the end of the day. These are fitting very nicely tight together. And as you can hopefully see, this part lines up very smoothly. I cannot feel a ridge there on either side. So the precision of duplicating these parts and making the alignment, this machine performed very well. And that's one thing that if you're working with this in more of a small business production environment, you're definitely going to want that repeatability and that precision to be there. So that's a mixture of having a machine that's rigid and precise, um, but also determining the right bit and this, the feeds and speeds for that. Now this is a very robust machine. It is very strong. It has with those linear rails and those stepper motors, those lead screws. Um, this is not going to be something that you're going to have to be tweaking your adjustments. You're not going to be having a lot of wear and tear on wheels. You got to keep those rails clean. You got to make sure the dust keeps away from them, keep them oiled a little bit. But that should allow you to be able to use this machine more, push it harder uh, without as much maintenance involved. And so that's where I feel this is definitely something for the type of hobbyist that wants something a little bit more robust or the, the small business that's looking to do some home decor, doing some signs and things. And they, they want a machine that's kind of kind of hold up to uh, some some of the workshop abuse we put at it. Uh, now, I've, I'm just, you know, 20 hours into this machine, give or take. I've done a number of tests. I did the ones on camera. I've done some more outside of it to try to get to know this machine before I put out this review. Uh, will it hold up in the long run? I have high hopes for it. I mean, they've done a number of machines before. This has improvements over the ones that I've seen other reviewers do. So um, this isn't like they're new to the game. Um, there are definitely some things they could maybe improve on it, but that's also going to bump up that price. So when you're talking about $1,700, $1,800. Yes, it's a little bit more than some of your others, but I think it's warranted in the quality of this machine, the size of the machine, and the fact that you're not going to be doing as much routine maintenance on it as often as you would with some of those lower quality machines. Everybody's going to ask me, would I recommend this machine? And, you know, I don't necessarily like to go and do I recommend this for you or not. What I want to do is maybe present a few uh, scenarios for you. 
For the hobbyist that's been playing around with a diode laser and you're interested and curious about CNC machines, this is a bit of a jump. I mean, it's a $1,700, $1,800 machine, but it is a lot of machine and it's got some good working area. Now, they do have their 4040 Pro model that's going to be a similar footprint to those diode lasers. And that might be something you want to check out. And I'll have links down to uh, my friend Clack at the clock shack he's got a great video on that one and so if if the sticker price is kind of scaring you on this one then definitely look at that one but if you're looking at this for uh you know home-based business small business um you're doing some home decor maybe small sign work um doing some small metal work things like that this is going to be a great machine for a business type scenario that you're getting into it um you don't necessarily want a large you know, 30 inch by 30 inch or bigger uh, machine like my other one, Finity, and it's going to be at least half the cost of that. But you're going to have the rigidity, you're going to have the precision, and you're not going to have the maintenance that goes with uh, the lower end machines um, to allow you to kind of focus on your business. And hopefully the machine is just running along for you, eating up what you're throwing at it. It also has some nice upgrade options. It has that 65 millimeter spindle mount. Um, you can upgrade to a trim router style with the Makita or the Bauer, uh, or you can go into like a 1.5 kV uh, VFD controlled spindle, even a water cooled spindle. Uh, you can do a lot with that. So it, you're not just limited to this 300 watt spindle. Uh, and it's going to be great to get you started, but as you start moving into bigger projects and, and more work, definitely upgrading that spindle is going to open up the speed and the capabilities of this machine even more. And as a small business owner, that's definitely something that time on a project, anytime you can cut that down or reliability, move that up, uh, it's just going to be money and time in your pocket. So I hope this was a good initial overview and review of this machine for you in its stock setup. I am going to be working with this mount. I'm going to be probably adding a trim router to it next, um, putting it through its paces with a little more power. Um, they do have a dust boot option. I'm going to try to get my hands on that to kind of show you uh, why I think that would be critical, especially if you're using it outside of an enclosure. Um, it did not come with a machine, but they do have one for this spindle as well as there are some options if you upgrade to the larger 65 millimeter uh, router as well as well i wanted to definitely show you some projects that maybe will inspire you in your workshop whether it's as a hobbyist and you're making gifts just having fun for yourself or maybe as a small business a home business that you want to uh, expand your offerings out to your craft fairs and your customers whoever they are uh, definitely opens up some new options for you and I want to share those with you as well. So uh, I hope this was interesting for you. I hope you learned something. If you have questions about this machine or anything else in my workshop, definitely leave those comments down below and I will try to get back to them as best I can. I will have links down below to this machine where you can find out more about it. Some of them may be affiliate links and those do give me a little bit of a kickback. And so I appreciate when you use them, but no pressure. Just want to make sure I can give you my information on any of the things I'm using in my workshop as well. I definitely am excited to do more with the CNC in the workshop and uh, provide more of that content to you. And so I hope you will check those videos out in the future as well. But until then, I hope you can get out in your workshop and make something too. We'll catch you next time.